Hi, my name is Kevin Davidson and this is Palau. I've spent the last 13 years of my life working as a photographer and videographer. I've come to know these islands well. I feel like I know them like the back of my head. Oh, shout! And now I know where this really big rock is. And I feel like I could take you to see it at any time because I most certainly will not forget where it is again. Oh, Today on This is Palau, we'll be taking a look at some members of the cephalopod family. The cuttlefish is related to the squid, the octopus, and the nautilus, believe it or not, which we'll be also taking a look at on later on the show. The cuttlefish lays its eggs in lattice type of reefs or fire coral. And I have some wonderful footage of those eggs in the reef and also of them hatching. I do not have footage of how a cuttlefish mates but I do know that they do get together, form something like this with their tentacles, and pass off a spermatophore, or a sperm packet, to the female. Afterwards, they part ways, and the eggs are laid on the reef. And I'd like to give you my renditioning of how cuttlefish might mate. Life on the reef is a fairly simple and easy life. Sea creatures come and go, and occasionally some get along together better than others. When the cuttlefish searches for a mate, he's very excited at the prospect of finding a partner. He searches everywhere and tries to attract the attention of another cuttlefish. However, it's a harsh and cruel world out there and sometimes the going gets tough and even downright boring. Until to his surprise, he spots a potential mate. The female responds with some flattering and misleading looks, thus confusing the male into thinking he is desirable. A typical trick with females. The male does his best to look presentable and then performs his mating ritual. After a while, the female toys with his emotions some more and decides to give him a break. Maybe not a bad catch after all. She is certain that she can change his bad habits and make him a better male. Pretty soon, hormones take over and both parties make some pretty bad decisions. As the cuttlefish get together to exchange DNA, the male has a present, a sperm packet or spermatophore, which he gives to the female, placing it inside her body. The male acts like he knows what he's doing looks confident, and the female pretends to enjoy herself. After a bit of time, it turns out that the cuttlefish end up having a good time after all. And so continues the cycle of life. Wasn't that great, guys? Cuttlefish getting along like that along the reef. I'm almost positive that's how they do it. I could be wrong. I'm not a marine biologist. The cuttlefish may have some of the most unique movements of any creature under the sea. You might think of them as an underwater helicopter with their ability to move forward, backward, side to side, or hover in a stationary position. What might be an impossible move for other marine life is simple for the cuttlefish due to a couple of modifications to its body. A highly evolved flexible fin surrounds them and allows the cuttlefish to perform their ballet of moves underwater. The undulations of this encompassing ribbon are almost mesmerizing as they hover slightly above the reef, blending in with their environment. Their other mode of transportation comes in the form of a small flexible tube at the mouth, which lets them blow a jet of water and allows for a quick departure to avoid danger. This small tube can change angles, allowing for turning in almost any direction. Chromatophores within the skin help all members of the cephalopod family change color and appear almost invisible on the reef. Color changes, along with various textures in the skin, help them avoid danger in the aquatic world. When the cuttlefish is ready to lay eggs, she chooses coral heads with many cracks and crevices in which to hide them. Using the tentacles, she reaches deep within the coral to place the eggs, which resemble a ping pong ball. In less than a month, the eggs turn from white to clear. We can now see inside the egg now, 
and observe the baby within. When the juvenile is ready to come out, they push on the egg and pop out, leaving behind the yolk sac that has provided their food source during incubation. Once introduced to their new world, they are a complete miniature version of the adult, ready to hunt and protect themselves. A necessary trait in the marine environment where survival is a skill used on a daily basis. Cuttlefish are curious creatures, and we as divers usually have a great opportunity to observe them up close to see how they interact with the reef. As with all marine animal interactions, good buoyancy and slow movements will allow you to have the ultimate experience while diving. Guys, one thing is probably for certain. These islands of Palau were made over hundreds of thousands of years by Mother Nature. And now, around us, Mother Nature's beauty still shows. Everywhere you look is a sight to behold. From the vast tropical rainforests which run right close to these stunning white beaches here in Palau. The Nautilus is a member of the cephalopod family. Its relatives consist of cuttlefish, squid, octopus. It has a small little beak-like mouth, just like those type of animals, allows them to drill into the shell and suck out the insides, much like a vampire. Um, it has a small jet like the cuttlefish to propel itself around, and as you'll see in the video, the small siphon tube comes out and can direct its flow. Think of this as some sort of an underwater submarine of the nautical world. It can make himself go anywhere he wants with that little jet and direct its stream. That along with sticky tentacles along the outside allow it to reach out and grab shells and small bits of things that tumble down from the depths above. They're much like scavengers, and so therefore when we set a trap for them, we'll put something in there just for them to scavenge off of. Let's go see what it is. This is what we use to catch the Nautilus in. If they're living at a depth of a thousand feet, it's very difficult to swim down there on scuba tank and get them right. So we have to drop a trap down on a line a thousand feet deep. In the front of one end of this cage is a funneled opening. When they find their way in there, they get trapped inside. Nautilus check in, but they don't check out. The next day we pull the trap up. Why in the hell would a goddess want to swim into this cage at all, right? You're wondering. Well, we must have to put some kind of bait in there, eh? What would that bait particularly be? Since they're scavengers, they eat just about anything. But I'll show you what I use. It's my good luck charm for the past 13 years catching Nautilus. And so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I introduce to you the very thing that will help me, Kevin Davidson, catch more Nautilus than anyone else on the entire planet. Mr. Chicken. Yay. Hi folks, my name is Mr. Chicken. I'm gonna catch me some Nautilus today. <laughs> yes, that's right. Chicken is the key secret ingredient. Yes, folks, that's right. Mr. Chicken is the secret key ingredient to catching Nautilus. Don't ask me why. It's what I was turned on to when I first came here. And so we string this guy up inside the cage. And the smell from the fat, perhaps, the layers of you know, something different other than fish. Fish works too, of course. You take a chopped up fish and add it to the cage also. Might bring you a little good luck, but this is my good luck charm right here. And there we have a tied up chicken, suitable for framing. Guys, what's the difference between erotic and kinky? Erotic is when you use a feather. Kinky is when you use the whole chicken. Let's go catch Nautilus. Located in the confines of this barrel are the approximate 1,000 feet of rope I will need to sink this trap to the bottom of the ocean. All we have to do now is load it all onto a boat and take it on out to my favorite dive site. Pulling a 1,000 feet of rope by hand would be nearly impossible, so two boats are required to pull the trap from the depths. Once in shallow waters, the cage can be examined closely. Nautilus have been propelling themselves through ancient seas 265 million years before dinosaurs inhabited the Earth. 
the Nautilus is described as a living fossil since they have remained virtually unchanged for millions of years. During the day, Nautilus enjoy their dark cold waters at depths from 9 to 2,000 feet and ascend to 3 to 500 feet at night to feed. So if you see one underwater, you're diving too deep. A set of large eyes peer out and approximately 90 tentacles reach out manipulating and smelling food. You can feel their jet propulsion system at work located at the bottom of the main body. The Nautilus of Palau grow rather large and this juvenile is no bigger than my hand. You can tell that it's a baby since the stripes run right up to the base of the shell where the adult has a white area at the front. If you take a Nautilus and hold it in any other position, it will right itself immediately back to its original position due to the air chambers inside. When stuck in a corner, this cephalopod can use its siphon tube to direct the water jet in any direction in order to free themselves. In case of predators, this prehistoric animal can withdraw into its armor and cover with a tough, leathery hood. If drastic danger is pending, the Nautilus uses the siphon tube to spin around quickly, making it difficult for triggerfish and snapper to bite through the protective cover. When we're finished observing and photographing these mystical creatures, we release them and their natural tendency is to seek deep waters for safety and therefore remain unharmed. Join us again for another exciting adventure in Palau. My name is Kevin Davidson, and it's a privilege to live on this beautiful island. I don't have a shirt. Where can I clip this at? Are you sure? Doesn't that hurt? <laughs>